morning to all of you today we will discuss about the experiment on pn junction diode our aim of the experiment is to draw the iv characteristic curve of pn junction diode in forward biasing mode as we know that there are two types of biasing for pn junction diode but we uh, uh, forward biasing and reverse biasing but today we will only discuss about the forward biasing characteristic iv characteristic in forward biasing p type semiconductor is connected to the positive p type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and n type is connected to the negative terminal of the battery this is your forward biasing condition and whereas in reverse biasing your p type is connected to negative terminal of the battery whereas the n type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery so let us first see its circuit diagram we have this symbol is for pn uh, junction diode this is your p type and this side is your n type now this p type is connected to positive terminal and along with uh, in the path of this p type we will find that this voltmeter is connected to the uh, the positive side of the voltmeter is connected to p and the negative side of the voltmeter is connected to the n now this terminal you can see it is connected to the negative terminal of the milli ampere and positive terminal of the milli ampere is connected to the center tap of the rheostat now let us see the connection of the rheostat now from this side the negative side the n type from the n type you can see one uh, it is connected to the first uh, the second terminal end of the rheostat and you can see this negative terminal of the battery is also connected to the same point of the rheostat now this positive terminal of the battery is then connected to the first side of the rheostat now so you can see the what are the apparatus required you can see it is the pn junction diode this voltmeter this milli ammeter rheostat and a battery eliminator now if we talk about the observations you will find in the least uh, the voltmeter the least count of the voltmeter is 0.05 volt as you can see this is your voltmeter you can see there are 20 divisions for one volt and uh, uh, so what is the least count the minimum uh, measurement which we can do from this voltmeter is 1 divided by 20 that is 0.05 volt now you can see we have written least count of ammeter in fact that is your milli ammeter so you can see for 10 milli ampere we have 10 sub divisions so for each division it will be 1 milli ampere the count will be 1 milli ampere so the least count of the milli ammeter is 1 milli ampere now we have drawn a table serial number voltmeter reading ammeter reading as we have done for the ohms law in the term one let us assemble our apparatus according to our circuit diagram as you can see we have already assembled the things according to our circuit diagram i can again show you see this p type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of this voltmeter and this n type is connected to the negative terminal of the voltmeter now from this positive terminal of the voltmeter we can see that this uh, connection uh, the terminal is uh, connected to the uh, from the uh, p type of the semiconductor it is also connected to the negative of this milli ammeter and from the positive of this uh, milli ammeter it is connected to the center tap this is your center tap now let us see from the other side from the negative terminal of this diode n n type diode it is an n type pn junction it is connected to the second terminal of this rheostat along with the negative terminal of the battery eliminator it is also connected to the same point now 
you can see that this positive terminal of the battery eliminator is connected to the first terminal of the rheostat. Now let us see. <coughs> so the things are assembled according to our circuit diagram. Now let us see how to take the readings. So in the battery eliminator, we have kept four maximum up to four volt. We have kept maximum up to four volt. Now we have to slide. We have to slide this center tab for each division in the voltmeter, and uh, for each division in the voltmeter, we will also measure. Uh, we will see the uh, division deflected in the milliampere. So let us begin. So I am just sliding. So here we are having the first division in the voltmeter. First division in the voltmeter. We have not seen any deflection in the milliampere. So you can say the first reading zero for not zero. Then second for one one division. This V not is your one division. So one into the least count. The least count is zero point zero five. So we are getting for 0.05 volts, we are getting zero current. There is no deflection in the milliampere. Now you can see we will again slide it. Now you can see for two also we are not getting any deflection in the milliampere. For three also we are not getting anything. For four, again we are not getting anything. Five also, the milliampere is zero. For six division also we are having nothing. Now seven also we have nothing. Okay. You can see till seven division in the voltmeter, our milliampere deflection is nil, nothing. So you can say for two, three, four, five, six, seven up till here. We are having no deflections. Means it will be zero point So till seven deflections in the voltmeter, we are not getting any single deflection in the milliampere. Now for the eighth one, let us see for the eighth one. So as we are in the eighth division in the voltmeter, you can see we have one division in the milliampere. Eighth division means for eighth division, we are having. One division in the milli uh, milliampere. So, so here we are getting one multiplied by the least count is one milliampere. So we are getting one milliampere. Okay. So <coughs> let us go for the next. So for ninth division, now you can see the milliampere. The reading is uh, getting faster. So in the eighth reading, eighth division in the voltmeter, we were having only one division in uh, milliampere. But for this ninth division in voltmeter, we are having four milliampere current in the circuit. So 
9. So we are having 4 milli ampere. 4 milli ampere. Now we will go for the next 10th division. You can see the current is increasing very rapidly. The current is increasing very rapidly. So for the 10th division, for the 10th division, you can see the 10th reading. Means for 0 0.50 volts, we are having how many divisions? It is 15. into 1 milliampere that is 15 milliampere of the current. Now let us go for the next one 11 division in voltmeter. So 11th division in the voltmeter voltmeter we are getting 33 so space is let us write it here. Eleven is in zero point five five volt. We are getting thirty three into one milliampere. That is your thirty three milliampere. Okay. So after that for the 12th division you can see it is now it has now crossed the uh, exceeds the maximum limit of this milliampere so we will stop here only so we will keep up to this 12 reading we will keep up to this 12 reading so we have got our uh, required readings so you can see from 1 first to 7th reading means up to right from 0 to the 7th reading we are not getting any deflections in the milliampere. After that you will find that the current is increasing very rapidly. You can see 1 milliampere, then 4 milliampere, then 15 and then 33 milliampere. Why is this happening? See when you make PM junction diode you will find that at the junction there is a depletion layer. When we go for forward biasing mode, the depletion layer first decreases. The depletion layer first decreases. The potential difference which we are going on increasing, we are which we are increasing, it is depleting the depletion layer. It is lowering the depletion layer. When this depletion layer is completely finished, then there is an easy movement of the charges of the flow of the means movement of the charges. So in here we are getting no current in the medium uh, in our circuit. So to the voltage after which we get the effective current in the circuit. Before that we were getting zero current, no current in the circuit. And after reaching this voltage, you can see that uh, our current was increasing rapidly. For this, so this voltage will be uh, this voltage will be known as the knee voltage. Knee voltage means after achieving that knee voltage, the current in the circuit increases very rapidly. Generally, the knee voltage for uh, silicon is 0 0.7. Volt and that for germanium is 0 0.3 or 0 0.35 volt. So the material which we have been used uh, for making our main junction diode is your germanium because its mean voltage is also 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 with 0 0.35 volts. Okay. So we have to plot the graph for this. We have to plot the graph between I and V. You can see I have plotted a graph rough graph but, uh, I versus V. So this is your IV characteristic graph. So taking these data just plot, we will just plot a graph.
will plot a graph and then we will do the calculation. We will do the calculation for dynamic resistance. For that, dynamic means when the current is rapidly increasing in the circuit, at that point what is the resistance. So we will choose any point and we will take uh, the change in potential, slight change in the potential and the slight change in the uh, current and uh, taking that uh, ratio we can get the dynamic resistance. We can think in a raw sense we can simply say you just take a slope at this particular point at any point when the current is increasing rapidly. So at that point we get the dynamic resistance at that particular point. At that particular point. So this was the thing which we have to do in this uh, experiment. Thank you.